Hello and welcome to Touching the Sunrise podcast. I am Sister Catherine Herms, author of Surviving Depression, A Catholic Approach, and Reclaim Regret, How God Heals Life's Disappointments, and Spiritual Guide in the Heartwork program, which specializes in helping people walk the road of spiritual growth and inner healing. For the past 10 years, I have been walking alongside wonderful women and men who want a more heart-centered and spiritual life, but would like support along the way through online programs, a Facebook group, a heartwork community on Patreon, and one-on-one spiritual guidance. I walk with people on a contemplative and healing path, one that has been trodden for thousands of years. Basically, I'm here to help you surrender to the power of the Holy Spirit who has come to make your being the throne of the Holy Trinity so that your life, your prayer, your relationships, your dreams and goals and desires will most deeply satisfy those deepest desires and longings of your heart. You can find out more about me and what God has led me to do in the world by visiting my website, touchingthesunrise.com. So let's start as we always do, reconnecting the scattered parts of our lives, remembering, putting together the fragmented parts of our memories, of our emotions, of our thoughts, refreshing ourselves. Take a deep breath directly into your heart, even deeper than your heart into that organ that divine grace transforms with the presence, the light, and the life of the divine trinity. With Teresa of Avila, we enter into our inner world as explorers, as if we are entering a mansion or a castle or the heart of God. In the centermost room of the castle is silence, a pulsing dynamic call of love that really could only come from the one who is love himself. We enter the castle through the doors from the outside and make our way gradually toward that inner sanctuary where God himself is and from where he is filling our entire being with his light. On the journey through the rooms as we approach the center, we need to face our resistances, our weakness, our desires, our sin, our passions, those bent parts of us. Every time we we see new things about our humanness, our bentness, we become more open, more malleable, more godlike. So let your heart now call out to your God. Let your thoughts melt and surrender to the work of the Spirit. Today we're going to be talking about an old book and a new book, both of which have been profoundly transformative in my life. And I really wanted to share them with you. The next three meetings that we're going to have are actually going to be around these two books. Um, The first time I flipped through the pages of the best-selling spiritual testament, He and I, I was flabbergasted. So he and I is the old book. He and I is the journal of Gabriel Bosis, a French laywoman who lived in the first half of the 20th century. In this book, Gabriel documents her, what she calls simple talks with Jesus. These are like intimate conversations with Jesus that were real and personal. The great historian Daniel Ropes wrote in his preface to the original French edition, quote, here we breathe the sweet fragrance of Christ. Whoa, I thought as I turned page after page, and then I turned to Jesus and asked, how come you don't speak to me this way? Immediately the answer came back, because you don't listen. It's one of those stop you in your tracks responses that God uses to get your attention when he has a plan. So, okay, I'll listen, I said. As I walked down the hallway, I heard a quiet voice inside me say, 
you can help sister there with her bags. So over I went and offered to help. I noticed that the more I responded to the invitations spoken in my heart, the more they came. The more I listened, the more I heard. And it was the beginning of something new and beautiful in my life. So the best-selling spiritual testament, He and I, reveals the words of Jesus to Gabriel Bosis, who was a single woman, a nurse, and in her later years, a playwright. She lived in France in the early 20th century. Bosis documented these simple talks with Jesus in her journals. They were intimate conversations with him that were real and personal. And you can tell they were conversations that touched her deeply. After her death, these journals were made public. Here are Jesus' words to her on April 17, 1947. He says, The unfolding of my love in you is my personal happiness. I'm waiting for it. Everything that affects you touches me personally. My friend, you are part of me, and I, your Christ, am part of you. Then why should I alone desire this close union? Don't you also desire it? You see, it's quite distressing for a friend to have to say, Love me, think about me, serve my cause, give me your life. Don't you think that the one who loves would prefer to have the other read his sentiments? And when this does happen, he is so deeply touched. With these words, Jesus takes a risk. He risks telling us that he is in love with us, that he desires both our attention and our response. Jesus has a deep friendliness for us that he wishes we felt toward him. The simple talks in he and I between Jesus and Bosis hold the key to the development of this friendship with Jesus. No spiritual jargon, methods, or process. Just time spent with Jesus, listening to his desires for us, his love for us, his suggestions for deepening a friendship he so desires. One of my favorite words from Jesus to Gabrielle is this, quote, keep in mind more often that I give you everything for nothing, all my heaven for your nothingness and for the mere pittance of your yearnings, unquote. Yes, all of creation, the death and resurrection of Jesus, the sacraments, and his body and blood given to me for food each Sunday or daily, if I desire it, eternal life, all of this for the, quote, mere pittance of my yearnings for him. That yearning can stretch from quote, fulfilling my Sunday obligation, zipping in and out of Mass, or, quote, writing a check for a charity, unquote, all the way to seeking Jesus present in everyone, in every place, and in everything. So many Christian lives, even when religious duties are meticulously fulfilled, are saddened because, because they lack this vibrant beauty of desire. In reading the words of the Lord as recorded by Gabriel, we discover that all Jesus is asking for is desire, which he defines simply as focusing our eyes on him no matter what we are doing. That's all he's really asking of us. I was looking through some of the Amazon reviews for the book He and I, and I I came across one by someone who identified herself as Amanda. And she talks about how she loves to read books. Um, 
And she asked Jesus to find her a book about him that would show her truly who he is. And she came across a book, He and I. And then she says, Jesus is so, I, I can't find the words to describe him, but he's just irresistible. My beautiful Jesus. This book, she says, is life-changing. It changed me. I, I think of when a person falls in love, when we hear a child say to us how much they love us or they're grateful for something we've done for them, maybe even a friend. There's something about that engagement, that interaction that goes beyond official saying of prayers to our heart just wrapping itself around the Lord. And for it to do that, it, it almost has to, to wake up. Another person said that um, every time she picks up this book, it is as if Jesus is speaking and correcting me himself. I've begun certain spiritual disciplines in my own life lately. This is a slight aside. Um, and reading he and I can be a quote, a spiritual discipline. It's a discipline of spiritual reading and one that really focuses our thoughts, shapes our thoughts, shapes our heart and our character and our focus. So that is totally taken up with the Lord. She, she defines it herself as a love affair, a love story, and that in reading it, you won't be the same person afterwards. And I have to say, I wasn't. So tonight, I'm looking through my own journal. I'm flipping through the pages, and I see a little conversation with Jesus of my own. I wrote, Every interruption, Jesus, every request, every moment I am hidden behind the scenes is an Annunciation moment. Without waiting for even a second, Jesus confirmed by saying, In my heart, it is I who am pouring you into Mary's mold so that you may take on my features. And I wrote, a gift to be met by a leap of the heart. And he responded, yes, I'm bending your will so that you see the advantage of mine. I'm shaping you. Thank you, I wrote. By reading the words of Jesus to Gabriel Bosis, I had learned what Jesus' voice is like. The kind of things Jesus says, how he is interested in the things I am interested in, the way of being, of responding, of living events in my life, the way he does, how Jesus is always there, a silent friend just waiting to enter into conversation with me. You could say I got used to hearing how Jesus speaks in an everyday life by listening in on how Jesus spoke to Gabriel. Of course, I had meditated on the Gospels, and I had applied the words of Jesus recorded there to my life for years, and I had tried to follow him in every way I could. But sometimes I just need something simple. I want to know I'm loved, that I'm safe, that I'm wanted, just like everyone else. This little exchange between Gabriel and Jesus on September 17, 1937, expresses best what I'm trying to say. Gabriel writes about something she had witnessed. A little girl, she said, said to her father, Give me your hand. And Jesus tells her, Say that to me often. My friends, Jesus doesn't need grand statements or heroic heights of perfection from us. He leads us to happiness and holiness 
through simple presence and little actions. You can learn to recognize the way Jesus enters into the smallest realities of our life and teaches us what our hearts most want to learn by listening in on another's conversations with the Lord. So let Jesus' tender voice fill your heart. Just a little bit every day is all you need. As your conversation partner, Jesus himself will teach you. You will learn to love his voice, to love his will, to love his people. You will surprise yourself at how easily you slip into this friendship with the Lord. So what about the second book? The second book is Jesus Speaking Heart to Heart with the King. And it's a new daily devotional based on He and I. Each day, you find a short scripture passage for that day and just a few lines from Jesus as they have been recorded by Gabriel in He and I. And the part that I truly love is a one-line conversation starter for your own conversation with Jesus so that you can begin your own uh, journal, your own listening. You can experience that, that sweetness that she did, that I have, but also that, that strong movement to, to him shaping you into all that he desires you to become. With Jesus speaking heart to heart with the King, you can listen in on Jesus' conversations with Gabriel Bosis, and you can even start your own. Jesus' tender voice will fill your heart. God has amazing ways of knocking on people's hearts, awakening desires, rousing questions, provoking an unexpected spiritual dynamism. Remember, if you like some extra support and are ready to embark on a sustained spiritual journey, you can connect with me in a number of ways by going to my website, touchingthesunrise.com. Until the next time, Take care of yourself and remember that you are not alone. You are loved no matter what. And when you search within yourself, you will find not only yourself, but the throne of the divine trinity. You have a calling, you have a mission, and every gift, every grace, every moment, even every fall, mistake, and sin is a step toward your completely and wholly being taken up into the mystery of God's love for you and for all creation. Remember always that you have a treasure of inexpressible joy hidden in an earthen vessel, small and fragile. May this overflowing joy fill you with this fragrance. God be with you.